Please note, we would like to make it very clear, we are totally against the form of discipline described in the articles and accounts being used on minors and non-consenting adults. Slippered, tossed, caned and spoilt for choice. My how you English boys and girls were spoiled for choice, obviously your teachers were far too soft with you. Would you prefer the slipper or the cane, young man? Hands or bottom? Now or later? Hard or soft? Please tell me if it's too sore and I'll do it more gently, or I'll stop right away. Interesting that you have these reports of choices being offered. Over 150 years ago, when the tours was administered across the buttocks, boys didn't like the change to having their hands leathered as there was no protection or padding. Perhaps that's why down south many preferred the cane or slipper across the bottom with trousers, skirts and pants to give protection and take away the sharpest sting of the punishment. Nothing like a bit of padding to help protect the rear. Up here we did as we were told and any choices were left to the teacher. To belt him with them now or at the end of the period. How many strokes and how hard? Single hand or crossed hands? We didn't have to think over the options, all the thinking was done for us. Our function was to obey, get our hands up for the belt and endure what came, like lambs to the slaughter. I had six strokes of the cane, pretty full on from memory, from the now infamous Mr. Derek Slade when I was a pupil at St. George's School in Suffolk. My offence was to have been caught with a copy of a porn magazine called, from memory, Fiesta nothing at all to do with the eponymous car, I can assure you, that had been passed around my classmates and had, not to put too fine a point on it, acquired some rather sticky pages by the time it got to me. I was thirteen at the time. I received several lower numbers at school normally two or three strokes, but in the fifth form I received three six of the bests, and yes they really were the best, the last time was on thin PE shorts, and that left a long-term impression, I can tell you. From the age of 13 to 15, I was caned three times, mostly for disruptive behaviour in the classroom of my grammar school. The first caning was administered bending over a table to my trousered bottom. The second on my pants and the third and final one across my bare bottom. The first two occasions were very painful, but the third was so severe over a week past before the bruises began to fade. I was caned slowly and deliberately, with a good thirty seconds, between each of the six strokes. Expertly the headmaster aimed to beat my bottom from top to bottom without striking the same place twice. Every stroke that fell reduced me to my knees on the floor screaming out with pain and clutching my buttocks as if to ease the pain. The headmaster on the other hand was enjoying wielding the cane with great force made more painful by the fact that I was of slim build with slender legs and my small firm bottom confined the target area's intensity. When it was over, to relieve the pain, he massaged my bottom with calamine lotion to reduce the bruising. This continued for a good ten minutes, telling me all the time that he was sorry to beat me so hard as he was very fond of me. Looking back, I wonder whether he received physical gratification from caning me and watching my buttocks quiver as he beat me. Perhaps, if the caning had taken place off school premises, I might have been sexually abused. I'll never know. I was caned a total of four times at my, boys only, secondary school in the 60s, and on two of those occasions, I was given the maximum six strokes. The first time was when I was in the third year aged 14, for fighting in the playground, any boy caught fighting was given six, and the second was in the fourth year, aged 15, for climbing onto part of the school roof to retrieve a football. The only time I received the cane at school was in my last year, was when I was 17-year-old senior boy, the caning was always done after school on a Friday, as to try and mess up your weekend if you had a girlfriend. Senior boys received only six strokes nothing less, mine was six strokes in the secretary's office after she had left and was always done in private. I too received six of the best at school. This happened on two occasions when I was aged 16 and 17. 
Both times the caning was given by the deputy headmaster, in his study, while I was bending over touching my toes. It was very painful, although I'm glad now to have had the experience. On other occasions I, like many in my class, received six whacks across my bottom with a slipper, or a leather strap. The strap hurt like hell and left purple welts across each buttock. The slipper was used more often and in all my school years was the weapon of choice for most of my punishments. I received six whacks on several occasions in the third, fourth and fifth years, so aged 13-ish to 16. During my 13 years of schooling I received the cane three times. I received the cane for the first time, when I was 10 years old when my primary school headmistress gave me three strokes of the cane for general class misbehavior. I received six of the best at ages 13 and 15. My first offense was for misbehavior on the way to school, and for not having my full school uniform on, I did not have my school cap on. My headmaster gave me the cane on my bottom, and I remember, having tears rolling down my cheeks, and jumping up to rub, after each stroke, so I made quite a display of myself. My second offence was for truanting class, and I was caned with two friends. My friends and I had to wait outside our headmaster's study with our hands on our heads and noses to the wall. He called each of us and administered our punishments. I was the second boy caned and it was horrible having to listen to my friend receive his punishment before I received mine. I was glad my ordeal was over and I don't remember hearing the third caning as I was focused on how sore my bottom was. Both occasions left my bottom covered with red tram lines and I had light bruising on my bottom, my second caning also left two angry red welts. We were treated fairly by our headmaster despite what personal opinions others may have as to the merits of school corporal punishment. Ultimately, I had broken the school rules and I was punished accordingly and within the appropriate guidelines and standards of the day. I received my sole caning in November 1969 when I was 14 and at grammar school. My offence persistent laziness in maths. The punishment three strokes administered by my headmaster to my bottom. I was made to remove my blazer and lower my trousers prior to punishment so my thin white Y fronts which to add to my pain and embarrassment were marked, were my only protection. The caning though painful was not quite as bad as I'd expected, and although I twice came close to being caned on subsequent occasions, I never felt it again. I felt no rancor, I had been lazy and warned beforehand, so the caning was deserved and certainly no one would now canner accuse me of being lazy. I was caned several times at secondary school, UK. Late 60s, all boys, but only got six of the best once. In the third year, aged 13 or 14, for fighting in the playground. Got it from the deputy head. The other lad got the same. My bum was sore for ages. I was a fair-haired 15-year-old in the schoolhouse at public school. The head boy was a blood, that is, good at rugby football, cricket, hockey etc and he had a crush on me. I didn't want this, feeling absolutely nothing for him. Also it made me unpopular since other boys thought that he treated me differently. They may have been right, though I was not preferred in any conventional sense. I had eight black marks, which meant six. I waited in the day room, doing my prep, with about thirty other boys. Footsteps coming down the long passage. A boy enters and, smilingly, whispers a message to the prefect taking prep. He departs. At last the prefect looks up. Lions to Fiedler's study. I get up shakily and make my way back down the corridor, out of the building, past the abbey church, vast and forbidding. Into the study block, up the stairs. Knock on Fielder's door. Wait. Come in. He is sitting at his desk. When he swings the chair round, I see that the his trousers are swollen at the crotch. There is a cane, lying on the couch. Well, lions, eight black marks. Anything to say? 
No fielder, I reply. Go and wait for me in the cloisters. Back downstairs, along the study passage, knowing that the boys are relishing this. To the undercroft. And wait. Eventually, fielder's footsteps. He appears with the cane. Move in front of the notice board. Bend. Feet apart. Lower. That's right, grip your ankles. Wider. I can see him through my parted legs as he moves to the side and folds back my jacket. He flexes the cane between his hands and lays gently it across my buttocks, adjusting his position. Legs astride. Trousers positively jutting. The first stroke, as always, didn't hurt for a second or two. But then. The second and third came slowly, deliberately. Fielder's left hand was in his pocket, caressing his stiff cock. The fourth was frightful. My grip on my ankles failed. Get down. Down, I said. I looked round, pleadingly. His eyes seemed glazed. Down, he hissed. Or there will be extra strokes. I reached down once more. His breath was labored. On the fifth stroke, I cried out. The hand in his pocket was moving more quickly now. Then it slowed. And the sixth. Christ, it was awful. All right, off you go then. I literally limped out of the undercroft out past the abbey again. A small party from the girls' school was coming out of the main door, giggling. They had obviously heard. I got six of the cane three times from the headmaster, aged 14 to 15, for accumulated demerits. Bending over, trousers on. Had advance warning, but didn't bother with padding. London, 1967 to 8. The headmaster seemed to regard the punishment as a bit of a chore and didn't hit especially hard. I found I could take corporal punishment pretty well, and once I knew what to expect, it didn't really bother me. Preferred it to detention. But the main deterrent to bad behavior was the fear of a bad report at the end of term, which would lead to interminable lectures and a bad atmosphere at home. I went to a very strict all-boys boarding school in the West Country when I was aged seven in the 1970s. The cane was a feared but daily ritual. As one grew older however, aged about nine, one began to realize that there was real potency in punishment. The early hints of a submissive dominant role play balance. Four people on either side and in between it was often very erotically charged, for the boy being caned at the headmaster, or perfect caning of matron afterwards, the other boys viewing the marks, touching them, sensual, sexual, sadistic. It meant many things after those initial split seconds of acute pain. Our school was very traditional so six strokes was the minimum. Never hear of anyone getting less than six strokes. Rare to get anything else, but occasionally a seventh, or even eighth stroke. When the headmaster was especially sadistic the last stroke was deliberately on the top of the thighs, just below the bottom. That was never pleasure. So, always six. Our school was very traditional so six strokes was the minimum, says Anthony. I've never heard of any school with a six-stroke minimum. I find the very idea inherently absurd, but, as you say that minimum was not only traditional, but very traditional. I'd be obliged if you'd name me a few other schools that had such a minimum. Even in the era, just after the war I do not recall six strokes as being the norm. As I recall six was reserved for the most serious offences, like stealing abd bullying. I also recall that as time moved on, six strokes became even less common as boys were not so tough. Six of the cane is going to leave a boy's bottom very sore indeed, and is not something that I ever came across that boys got used to. It was a feared and dreaded punishment. Hence it was rare that six strokes were given. I went to a Catholic grammar in North London during the 70s and often received various types of a caning. In the first year, we were told on the Monday to report to the year master on the following Friday afternoon for the strap, 
myself and another lad turned up after worrying about it all week. He didn't say anything just hands out. We both held them steady then crack down came the strap, so hard I yelped then my other hand got. The thick red swelling came up instantly. It hurt for about half hour afterwards. Then in the second year I got six really hard whacks of the cane across my bottom for doing I never knew what. I received my one and only caning at the hands of our deputy head, aged just short of 15, in 1967. School in North Cheshire. My first visit to him, but he told me that my age, fourth form, dictated that it would be the senior cane. And he announced that my crime stealing club funds, for which I have felt extreme shame ever since, without doubt warranted the full six, even though it was my first time. But he also asked what would be the reaction of my parents. I said that I was sure I would be punished at home also that night, my father kept a gym shoe for use on me. In that case he reduced the award, very fairly, I thought, to only three strokes. Perhaps he was really making allowance for the shock that it would be for my first time. Got it on seat of trousers, bent over armchair. I stupidly got up after the second, couldn't take it, so ended up getting four. But again to my shame, I never told them at home. Our boy's deputy head, no CP for girls, was the one responsible for serious discipline infringements. Being on report to him, Thursday after school, almost inevitably meant the cane. So I knew what I was in for. He was the only one used a cane otherwise the slipper, gym shoe, was in frequent use. There were not many canings, perhaps an average of two a week, judging by the cues. There was one in front of me, that day. I was scared stiff. I have to admit, I cried during and after. He showed me the punishment book entry, but I could hardly see it. It was even more painful than I had expected. My failure to keep down meant that I had the extra stroke lower than perhaps he had originally intended, just above the top of my legs. Serious tram lines. And I was supposed to tell my father to get his slipper on top of that. I'm afraid I couldn't face that. I cannot image many 14-year-olds willingly telling their father they have had reduced punishment at school so need to receive punishment at home. There is no way on this earth I would have told my parents had I been in the same position as you. Fortunately for me my parents did not subscribe to the idea punishment at school meant punishment at home, but even so I never informed them when I had been in trouble. I feel it was very unfair to give extra strokes for failure to stay down, or keeping a hand held out during caning. Everyone has different reactions to pain, if one person can keep their teeth gritted and stay still, well good for them, but some cannot cope so well and jump up, or remove hand. If they are given extra strokes for this, then it seems to me they are being punished for an involuntary reaction to pain. First no CP for girls, a subject on which there has been much discussion here, and which many people regard as unfair, and even as disadvantageous to girls, though it does seem to have been policy at a lot of English schools. Cases have been reported here where under those circumstances girls have actually tried to get boys caned, secure in the knowledge that they were safe from the penalty. Second the application of extra strokes for failing to hold position while being punished. I think this is most unfair. I assume the rationale for it was that the person being caned had failed to obey the instruction to stay in a particular posture throughout and thus deserved extra punishment. Reactions to pain vary enormously. I know people who are instantly doubled up with pain at the slightest trauma, whereas in my case you can whack me over the head with a concrete block and five minutes later I'll turn round and say, hey, be careful with that thing. However, as I was never caned, I don't know if the pattern would have been the same. Clearly ritually inflicted pain is in a different category from that routinely encountered in everyday life. 